Hey everybody, how's everybody doing? Praise the Lord. Wherever you are watching from all over the globe, God bless you all for watching. And thank you so much for watching. It is well with you. Today I want to share this message um, with you. Um, the joyful truth found in the parable of the lost coin. The joyful truth found in the parable of the lost coin. Either what a woman has ten pieces of silver and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of angel of God over one sinner who repents. It's from the book of Luke 15, verse 8 to 10. The Lord Jesus has been called um, a master storyteller. And the Gospels are filled with these tales. In his hands, each one entertained, connected with and taught whoever heard them. Jesus used parables in particular to reach his listeners in a powerful way. One known as the parables of the lost coin. In parts, a passage and wonderful truth about his father's love. It is a timeless lesson meant to encourage us in our faith. Praise the Lord. It's easy though to read through um, these stories too quickly. I found that showing down and setting into a parable often brings um, out its deeper meaning. And what I learn sticks with better with what is in mind. Let's explore these lost coin parables to find its treasure. So what is the parable of the lost coin? What is the parable of the lost coin? The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines a parable as a usually short fictitious story that illustrates a moral attitude or a religious principle. Several um, varieties of these have developed over time and they have all used every um, day events and people to teach important lessons. Mediterranean scholars and philosophers told parables from many years before Jesus. In fact, this form was used in the Old Testament. One example is found in um, 2 Samuel um, chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. After King David committed adultery with Bathsheba and murdered her husband, the prophet Nathan came to the king and told the story of a rich man who presently takes his neighbor's only um, Uwe lamb. David responded quickly and from the heart. David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this must die. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man. You can look at um, 2 Samuel um, chapter 12, verse 5 to 7. Jesus um, utilized this method of storytelling to great effect in his ministry. The last coin is an example of a um, similitude 
parable, which was when the speaker described a real life situation that the audience could relate to. In this case, um, he was losing a valuable piece of silver. The last coin um, parable is actually one of the sets of the short stories found in Luke 15. They were meant to help Jesus' listeners learn more about the kingdom of God. Jesus um, narrates the story of a woman who realizes, perhaps later in the evening, that, that one um, of her ten silver coins has gone missing. Any of um, his listeners would understand this woman's anxiety, so they would agree, agree that lighting her lamp and doing um, a full-scale search through the house would be logical steps to take. After she found it, the woman is elated, unable to keep the news to herself. She announces the discovery to those around her and invites them to celebrate with her. Praise the Lord! To whom is Jesus speaking? To whom is Jesus speaking? The audience that heard these parables came from all different segments of society, some more open-minded than others. No, the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. From the book of Luke 15, verse 1 to 2, Jesus knew what was in everyone's heart as well as doubts, questions, or attitudes they held. He showed great wisdom in using this uh, manner of reaching out to the crowd, using a familiar situation, made the meaning that much um, more understandable to each person. Praise the Lord! The meaning of this parable, the meaning of this parable, the effectiveness of this story comes partly from Jesus, a choice of image. In his day, women always received 10 coins as a wedding present. Each piece um, held sentimental as well as monetary value. So the loss of even one was very upsetting. The woman would have felt the loss keenly and would have been willing to go to great length to find her coin. Jesus goes on to say that God sees every person as having great value. The Lord feels great sadness when anyone is lost, following the ways of the world instead of him, and longs for them to return. The fact that he sent Jesus to earth was proof of that. Christ claimed in um, Luke uh, 19 verse 10, it says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Praise the Lord! As the story comes to a, a close, the woman has carefully searched until she finds it, um, her missing silver. She shares her great joy with neighbors and friends. Jesus uh, directly compares her reaction to God and the angels rejoicing when a person repents of their sin believes in the Son, and submits their lives to Him. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! What are the other parables Jesus tells in this chapter? Jesus begins this section of chapter 15 at verse 8 with the word or. This signals that something else has come before it. He has actually told one parable already and will follow with a third before chapter 15 is done. Interestingly, all these um, three stories use the same thread. Something or someone has been lost and there is great rejoicing at the end when that thing or person is found. 
The first story is known as the parable of the large ship. This time, Jesus asked his audience to imagine there were a um, shepherd in charge of a large herd of animals. From the book of Luke 15 verse 4, it says, Suppose, suppose one of, the, of you has hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? The shepherd, um, like a woman with a coin, urgently searches for the one lost sheep. His greatest desire is to find it and return it to the flock. Jesus again states that heaven is full of the same gladness for every lost person who comes back. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! The last of the three parables and perhaps the best known is a parable of the lost son. This tells of a man whose youngest son demands his inheritance from his father. This son then goes away from home and quickly spends all the money, leaving him working for a farm, a big, big farm, hungry and humiliated. You can read, um, read uh, Luke chapter 15, verse 17 to 18. When he came to his saints, he said, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like your, um, one of your hired servants. Praise the Lord. But as the young man approached home, he was astonished to see his father uh, rushed to him and embrace him warmly. He was not only returned to his family, but a great feast was held to welcome him. This story has an extra section to do it. Um, an unhappy reaction from another family member. But the book of Luke 15 verse 28 says, The older son became angry and refused to go in. This was a caution for the Pharisees who often looked down on sinners and considered them hopeless causes. But all of us are to let go of judging others. The Father's response against reveals God's graciousness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. From the book of Luke, uh, chapter 15, verse 31 to 32, it says, My son, the Father said, You are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So why angels celebrate when a, a lost person comes to Christ? Angels are one of God's creations and have always been very interconnected with mankind. They have been messengers. Gabriel told Mary she would give birth to Jesus in Luke 1, verse 29 to 33. Warriors, Michael fought off another spiritual being in Daniel um, 10, verse 12 to 14. And ministers and angels brought Elijah food and granted him rest after he ran from Jezebel. In King, First King, um, nineteen, verse three to eight. In each case, they worked for the good of the people. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Angels and men share the deepest bond of all worship of God, one of their own kind. Satan was unwilling to do this and fell from grace. So angels know how important the state of a person's soul is. They are engaged in spiritual battles for us. And when someone submits to God, they rejoice over the victory of heaven's sight. Praise the Lord. So why did Jesus tell so many stories about this concept? During this year of the year, 
Before Jesus came, the Pharisees and Sadducees had risen to power. The two groups joined together um, and become um, the religion leaderships of Jewish society. They knew the people needed to be instructed and led in their faith. Unfortunately, they used a burdensome set of laws and well as condemnation and fear to accomplish their goals. Part of why Jesus came was to lead this oppression. Jesus often talked about the kingdom of heaven to bring hope, to change faulty thoughts and beliefs, to offer a fresh understanding of God, to show God's love and compassion, to teach what it means to live rightly. Should we celebrate when someone comes to Christ? While Jesus was on earth, he celebrated when someone chose to repent and follow him. For instance, when the tax collector, Zacchaeus, vowed to stop cheating the people he served and start helping them, the Lord was clearly pleased. In Luke uh, 19, verse 9 to 10, it says, Jesus said to him, Today um, salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost, as followers of Christ, we are called to walk in his ways. That in, um, includes expressing elation as others repent. James wrote about how we can even help a brother or sister reach that point. Joining in that process will only increase our joy at the good result. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In James 5 verse uh, 19 to 20, it says, my brothers and sisters, if one of you should understand from the, um, the truth and someone should uh, bring that person back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the arrow of the way will save them from the death and doubt cover them, cover all a uh, multitude of sins. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Reading the parables of Jesus is one effective way to learn about godly things and each story that impacts our faith. The last point um, should encourage us that we can always turn from sin and that God cherished us enough to welcome us back. God bless.